right, I think we're I think we're live. We're good. We're going. All right. All right. Saying we're live now. Yeah, I think we're live. Let me check. Let me double check Facebook just to make sure. Um, yeah. Pretty sure we are. Yeah, I see you now. All right. Yeah, I see you. All right. Cool. Yeah, see we're live, <laughs> baby. Awesome. We're All live. right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in tonight for we grew up on Blockbuster. And tonight we are going yeah. to get into some cool stuff. We're about to get into some some classics, some favorites of a lot of people's. Um, and this is episode eight. I think I just said that. Um, but tonight we are going to be reviewing Batman 1989. Yes, and sir. I know we both are stoked for this. I am and very excited for this one. Yes, sir. Before we get started, I have a quick very important question to ask you. What's that? You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Ah, oh, ah. Oh. What does that mean? Is there something, something you ask you pray, right? It just sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> well, Man. I had to start off with that just as a classic line, but we got a bunch of others that we'll be getting into. Um, but as far as, again, we'll be discussing Batman 1989, and this is a superhero film based on all, the DC Comics character of the same time, name. All-time classic movie, man. To me, this movie really set the standard for all the, you know, modern superhero movies that are coming out. Like, this was the most epic superhero movie that came out in this time. Um, personally, my favorite Batman movie out of all of them, you know, Christopher Nolan's movies were great. Um, even, hell, even the, the new Batman movie that came out was really good, but this one right here, man, this one is yeah. number one in my book as far as superhero movies, as far as Batman movies, it's just fucking awesome, man. All right, like you said, it definitely kicked off this... This whole superhero movie craze that, of course, since it has grown to a, a tire another realm, and you know, <laughs> we don't. Well, honestly, I think I could watch this more than I would watch certain Marvel movies. Um, oh yeah, but that's man. Just Definitely. Personally, but um, but like you said, yeah, that pretty much kicked off the superhero film craze. And again, uh, this the original comics was created by Bob Kane and yep. uh, Bill Finger. And this movie was produced by John Peters and Peter Goober. And it is the first installment in the Warner Brothers initial Batman film series, which we will be covering all of these um, initial Batman films. Yep. Um, and this film was directed by Tim Burton. And yes, yes. Very, very Burton. excellent director. He's directed some of, uh, some of the best movies of all time. Um, you know, he's looking at some of his movies. You know, you've got Nightmare Before Christmas. You've got this, you've got Batman Returns, which probably wasn't as good as this one, but it was definitely an awesome movie. Um, then after that, uh, I think so he did Sweeney Todd, too, I believe. Yeah, he did Sweeney Todd. Um, did he do so, uh, Dark, Dark Shadows, is that what it's called? Or the um, remake or something? Yeah, with Johnny the, Depp, Johnny I think Depp. it was. I think yeah. so. Um, I believe so. Let's, let me take a look at some of his... Uh, some of the movies that he's directed over. Oh yeah, he did Beetlejuice. Uh, he did big Beetlejuice. uh in one of my personal favorites, which everybody will freaking laugh at me, but I don't care. But uh, Pee Wee's yeah. Big Adventure. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> it's a pretty huh? funny movie. Yeah, it's a pretty um, funny movie. Yeah, he did. Um, he did Edward Scissorhands, uh, Nightmare Before you know, Nightmare Before Christmas, Sleepy Hollow in '99, uh, Corpse Bride. Uh, Dark Shadows, like you said, um, Planet of the Apes in 2001, even though that was, that movie was just fucking dude, crap. I hated it. That. I hated it. <laughs> it was so bad. The one with Mark wow. Wahlberg. Awful. Um, I forgot all about that one. Yeah. Um, did, uh, he also did the Alice in Wonderland, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So he's done a lot of movies with Tim, with, uh, Johnny Depp in them. Yeah. And even with this film's um, star. But um, we'll get into that now. Um, so this film stars Jack Nicholson, Michael Keaton, Kim Bassinger, Robert Wool, Pat Hingle, Lee D. Williams, Michael, I think it's Go, and then yep. Jack, um, Jack Palance, I think it's Palance. Yeah, yeah yep, Palance. Yeah. Um, so just an all. Opening thoughts. But. Yeah. 
all-star lineup in this movie. Um, this movie, I remember watching it so much as a kid, and even as I got older into adulthood, I just, I've watched it so many times, man. It's just, it's just a fantastic movie. Um, you can't go wrong with this. Um, there's just, as far as Batman movies go, like I said before, it's it's probably the best one in my opinion. Um, you know, people can say that The Dark Knight was the best one, but in my opinion, this one is the top Batman movie. Everybody has their own opinion on which Batman films are the the G O A T, but um, but actually, an uh, interesting like as far as like what you just said, as far as growing up on Batman, like honestly, this was one like the first two from Tim Burton, like. Well, I take it back. Maybe Batman Returns. Like I remember watching that as kind of a kid here and there, but I can't honestly think. I can't honestly say that I think I saw the first Batman '89 until like I was in middle school. Like, cause I kind of I think since I, you know, of course we were both born in the late well mid '90s, so um, like I pretty much grew up on the ones that we'll be covering. You know, yep, yep. a little down the line, the last two. But um, but yeah, this the 1989 one. I don't even think I saw that one until maybe I was like in middle school. Yeah, I, like, I, I saw I mean, this one. Like I saw this one quite often, especially as a little little kid. I actually saw Batman, Batman Forever first because that movie came out the year I was born. So I remember a lot with that one. But I clearly definitely remember watching this several times um, throughout my childhood. My grandparents actually had it on VHS, so I would pop this in quite a bit. And watch it, and then as an adult, you know, I, I bought the DVD. I still have it. It's in my collection over here somewhere. Um, it's just a, just a great movie, man. I brought it up to you earlier. I'm like, I can remember seeing that in your room like a long time yep. ago. Yep. Just hang out a lot, but but yeah, like I said, it's just kind of weird to me that I didn't really watch it too much as a kid. I mean, I guess once I was in middle school, you consider me a, a teenager at that time. But um, just some of my earliest memories of seeing it was, like, I remember going to, like, Kroger. And when Kroger used to have, like, the movies, like, you know, you can buy and stuff. Yeah. And, like, I just remember seeing the case. On the back, it had, like, the Joker on it. But for whatever reason, it just never, you know, I just never watched it up until that point. But, um, but of course, as of now, like, I've seen it so many times. And, like, it's definitely a favorite of mine's now. Like, I can watch it and... Um, just about quote any part in the movie, um, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of, but yeah, a lot of big lines in this movie, especially from the Joker. Like Jack Nicholson, he just plays this part so well. Like honestly, I don't think anybody at that time probably could have done a better job, just because you know Jack Nicholson was just, he's a fucking great actor, man. Like he All plays right, the gangster that's... well, he plays the role of Joker himself well, um, and as far as like a little bit of background from this movie, um, Tim Burton was actually inspired by uh, The Killing Joke, which was written by Alan Moore. It's a graphic novel of, the, of how the, the Joker's origin story is kind of told in a little bit different way. But I mean, it's pretty much down to a down to a team where how he got how he became the Joker. Um, yeah, it also took inspiration from uh, Batman: The Dark Knight Returns, which was written by uh, Frank Miller. Which is also a fantastic graphic novel. So, he, because back in the, back in those times, is when comics were starting to come back to a darker tone. Um, you see a lot of that with these two uh, writers. So, uh, Tim Burton took inspiration from both of those and put it in this movie, which is why it is so dark, <laughs> so dark in this All movie. Right. Dark but light in some yeah, as far of, as you know some areas, but um. But yeah, I read the same thing. I read like the Tim Burton really was never a big fan of comic books, and he just kind of, you know, he didn't never understood them. So like you said, Killing Joke was the first one he happened to come across that he could understand. But I mean, that's just a little bit, you know, about the movie, and we can, uh, you know, get a little further into some stuff maybe afterwards. But um, I mean, as far as the soundtrack goes, I mean... Oh, man, the soundtrack. Danny Elfman, God bless you, man. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah, Just Danny Elfman? Yes, just a beautiful soundtrack. Probably one of my favorite soundtracks in any film that I've ever seen. Just the orchestral songs in it, and plus, you know, you have Prince. 
Prince yeah, is in doing... this movie, who at that yeah, time was... does this. Yeah, at this Prince time... Is, oh, Prince is Prince, I mean... Yeah, I mean, and he was probably at his peak at this point, too, man. Late 90s, yeah. Right. Or late 80s, I'm sorry, yeah. late 80s, yeah. He's pretty much on the host, um, like... He had a hand in, like, the whole soundtrack. Well, not the score, which the score is no. Danny Elfman, but the actual motion, the soundtrack itself, Prince. Um, you know, he had a lot to do with that. And, of course, yeah. we hear a lot of his songs playing through the movie. So, yeah, so both soundtracks, both the score and Prince's, you know, part of the soundtrack, like, classic, memorable. Like, yep. I, I listen to both. I Like you said, I, I listen to Danny Elfman, the main theme, and then... I'll listen to Party Man by Prince. Yeah, so it's funny, yeah. uh, Prince actually did a music video for Party Man. Uh, yeah, I saw that. He's actually he actually dresses as the Joker in that music video, which was I thought was really cool. Yeah, but it was kind of like a, I felt like it was a little play on the Joker and Two Face because I remember the music video well. Like he actually has one side of his face painted, and then the other is just kind of normal. Yeah. So. I mean, his, you know, his his outfit, his attire that he has on his Joker pretty much expired. But, yeah, I just kind of always caught that when I used to watch it a little bit, uh, you know, when I first discovered it. But, yeah, but soundtrack, both of them have this classic level. So right, yeah, there's dude. not much else to say about that. Sure. But um, now we can dwell into the movie itself. I mean, pretty much what we've been doing, you know, for the past few episodes is just kind of went into each scene, you know, just kind of doing it that way. Um, so basically, you want to start off, you know, you want to start off. All right. Yeah. So um, in the opening scene, uh, we get, you know, shots of Gotham City. Um, with the opening credits, we hear the amazing opening theme uh, from Danny Elfman. Um, the first actual scene of the movie, we see like this family. They're like walking around Gotham trying to get a taxi. Um, I think they're going to a hotel. They're tourists. Um, they get kind of lost, end up going down this alley. Um, they come across this homeless guy. You know, he's asking for a dollar. They ignore him. This uh, this other guy comes around the corner. Uh, I think he hits the, the, the dad with the back of a gun. Um, the other one comes back. And uh, he looks at the and looks at the mom and says, "Lady, do the kid a favor. Don't scream." Of course, she screams. Which uh, these are, you, you can tell these are pretty much amateur thieves because uh, a professional thief, if the the person screams, they're gonna fucking take them out. Um, right. Well, this guy, you can already tell he's a little jumpy, so he's yeah. not even. Well, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but um, like pretty much after all that goes down, we cut to um. Moving silhouette on top of a building. We're yep. just hearing the screams, and you know, we see him walking. And after that, we see the two thieves on the top of the building, uh, basically just getting their what they just stole. Just you know, seeing what they got. And um, one of the thieves mentions that you know something weird's been going on around you know the the crime the crime scene, and you know people have been been experiencing some weird things and just basically he's just pretty jumpy and the other guys just tell him you'll shut up yeah, there, <laughs> you know, is. Not... there ain't no bat yeah so he basically just tell him to shut up and then yep. on behold you know yep. somebody in the background with... you see a big giant a big giant figure all black come down yeah. you see some wings stretch out um yeah they uh they look uh they hear the noise they look up and there he is. It's it's Batman. All right. So he pretty much, you know, just gets them down one by one. And then one of the thieves, he just just kind of hems up and daggles them over the rooftop. And then we get the famous line. He asks them, who are you? Yep. He goes, and... uh, he says, I'm not going to kill you, but I want you to tell all your friends about me. He goes, who are you? And then we get the famous, I'm Batman. And then the right. guy just, so, like, <laughs> loses his shit. Just kind of, like, tries to catch a breath, but he can't catch a breath. So yeah, he's pretty much petrified by what he just saw. And in the next scene, we cut to a um, press meeting going on, which we... It's uh, Commissioner Gordon and Harvey Dent. They're, you know, addressing the things going on in Gotham City. And... Next, we uh, cut to another scene with the gentleman sitting on the couch watching the press conference. Uh, 
playing with the deck of cards. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Jack Napier, played by Jack Nicholson. Uh, he is crime boss Carl Grissom's right hand man. Um, he's also uh, shanking uh, Grissom's uh, woman, Alicia, huh? um, who is played okay. by Jerry Hall. Um, having a little affair. Yep. And uh, he, she just basically is just talking to him about the whole ordeal and just telling her, you know, the city has nothing to worry about as far as criminal crime. You know, I, you know, Grissom has everything on, you know, everything down pat and yep. basically just shows a lot of confidence and kind of arrogance at the same time. And yep. when she asks, tells him that he looks good, he just turns around and goes, I didn't, I didn't ask. ask. <laughs> and she so, goes, I think, you, I think you look fine. He goes, this smug ass look. I didn't ask. <laughs> like, <all right>. bitch. <laughs> I know I look Jack good. Napier, <laughs> we already see that he's a pretty arrogant and, you know, somewhat confident individual. Um, and then the next scene was a cut to, um, I might be missing the scene between here, but um, next scene is Knox. Um, Alex Knox investigating the, yeah. the, the scene, right? Yeah, um, so it cuts back to the alley where the crime happened. Uh, you see the homeless guys, getting, they're getting taken away on an ambulance. You know, one of them's like, it's the bat, it's the bat. And then uh, we, see, we also see Detective Eckhart, who's a corrupt cop, also working with Grissom. Um, Alexander Knox comes in. Um, he uh, pretty much, you know, he asks about, uh, is Batman real? Um the guy tells him, you know, don't put this shit in the papers. Uh, Gr- or, uh, Eckhard, you know, he moves on back through an alley. Um, he sees Jack standing in a yeah. car with uh, Bob the Goon, which we see quite a bit in this movie, too. Right, which they um, pretty much they are handling their business, you know, paying him for what he needs to pay him for, for having, you know, being under Grissom. But um, pretty much they get into a little short altercation where... Um, Ragcar basically just tells Jack that he's nothing but a loony and that he's never going to be, you know, top of the crime syndicate. And that he's just, you know, he's just Grissom's errand boy, to which Jack yep. pretty much t- tells him, you know, don't don't believe everything, you know. <laughs> Someday yep. uh, you might want to think about the future. Yep, Jack, uh, he looks at him. He says a pretty, pretty big line that we see here, here later on in the movie. He says, uh, you should think about your future. Eckhart goes, uh, when you take over, Grissom is like, you, ain't, you don't have a future, Jack. You're an A1 nut boy, and Grissom knows it. Um, they start fighting. Guns are drawn. Um, and Napier goes, you better be sure. Um, right. and it, it cuts to a scene um, outside City Hall again. They're trying to hang up banners. It is Gotham's 200th anniversary. Um, the mayor is wanting, you know, a big celebration for that. Um the commissioner and Harvey Dent, you know, pretty much tell him, like, you know, it's probably not going to happen because of the crime. Like, we're going to go bankrupt, all this stuff. Um, after that, the next scene goes to the Gotham Globe, which is the newspaper in the movie. Uh, Knox comes in. The other, like, reporters are, like, mocking him because he's covering the Batman story. Um, he uh, goes to his desk and finds a pair of nice-looking legs. Sitting at the desk. Long to Lord Vicky have mercy. Bell. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, Vicky Bell, Kim Bassinger, Stone yes. Cold Fox. Yes, um, yes, yes. And basically, you know, she just tells him that she's interested in the story, which he's a little skeptical about at first because he feels that everybody's just mocking him, like you just said. So, you know, they join forces and, you know, are covering more about the Batman and the weird things that have been going on. And then uh, the next scene cuts to um, we meet Carl Grissom. Um, do you know what that? Do you have that? Do you know what that actor's name is? Yes, yeah, Jack Palance. He's uh. It's Jack Palance. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. I wasn't sure about uh, Carl, but yeah, we meet Carl Grissom, and basically he's having a meeting with a bunch of men, and you know, during that, Jack basically just tells him about what he should do, and then Carl automatically. It's that idea and volunteers Jack to do it himself, which yep. Jack doesn't really seem too happy about it. Yeah, because uh, I think he kind of feels he feels like it's a setup. I think because Gr- Grisham knows that uh, Jack is messing with uh, his woman. Um, after you know he uh, after Jack tells him maybe he should put someone else on the on the job, 
Grissom tells him, you are my number one guy. He dumps his cards in his hat and says, don't forget your lucky deck. Um, and then we see a shot of Grissom calling uh, calling the police, calling Detective Ed Eckhart. And he basically tells him, your luck is about to run out. And then yep. basically cuts to the next scene, which um, is at an event at Wayne Manor, um, which basically... Um, Bruce Wayne is having an event at his mansion, which we see a bunch of people like uh, Commissioner Gordon and uh, Harvey Dent there, just you know, gambling and you know playing craps. And then we uh, meet Alfred, uh, which is Michael Gall, which uh, um, pretty much he's gonna he's gonna be one person out of all these installments that we're gonna talk about that because he he did all four of them. Well, actually. Him and Commissioner Gordon, which yep. is um, yep. Pat Hingle, yep. they're the they all, yeah, they're yeah. the only two who did all four movies. Um, but uh, we'll get into those again later on. But yeah, we meet Alfred, you know, kind of briefly, and um, Vicky she comes and she asks us if anyone has seen Bruce Wayne, and some man turns around um, and says he doesn't know who Bruce Wayne is. Yeah. He goes, I'm not sure. But the <laughs> <laughs> with a kind of confused look on his face, but I think this look is actually him being memorized, mesmerized by Vicky. Um, so yeah, long story short, um, Who wouldn't be? Huh? you know, right. So we cut to basically another police officer uh, at the event telling Commissioner Gordon that something's going down, and Commissioner Gordon leaves in a pretty quick hurry. Then next is the. Uh, uh, Knox and Vicky, right in the uh, yeah in the room. Yeah, okay. they they uh, walk through like this little kind of gallery of like different types of like armor and stuff. Um, they kind of like joke about some of it. Um, Knox looks at one, doesn't realize where it's from. That that one guy comes in, he says it's Japanese. Uh, Knox goes, well, "How do you know?" He goes, "Cause I bought it in Japan." And then he introduces himself as Bruce Wayne. It's uh, Michael right. Keaton. <laughs> Right, so meet uh, Bruce Wayne, um, which, uh, you know, after he tells him he's Bruce Wayne, uh, Vicky Vale just kind of is like, um, so like, you sure this time? You're like, really, bro? <laughs> like, you, you, yeah, you he's sure? like, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure this time, and, I mean, long story short, I mean, there's not really just a little, kind of just a little um, dialogue about, you know, the Batman and him really kind of putting it off as he's a little skeptical of it, too, but that's because we know that he is batman um but yeah he takes an interest in vicky pretty much and um i guess he gives Knox a loan i don't know i guess yeah. we'll assume that he did yeah, he, i don't know uh, if that was like asked, a sarcastic he, thing yeah he asked bruce he's like well, how about a grant and then uh, a little bit later after you know they're talking about uh you know how they're covering the batman story and stuff alfred comes in and tells him that uh commissioner gordon had to leave uh, rather abruptly um so Bruce leaves, and you know, he tells Alfred to you know get more champagne and give you know Knox a grant. Um, they're staring at this mirror, which uh, actually has cameras behind it, so Bruce can he's showing at his little computer. So he sees everything. He goes back to watch the footage of Gordon leaving. Sees him talking about uh, Eckhart, you know, with the whole event going down with Jack's gang. Um, it cuts to a shot where at Access Chemicals, there's police surrounding it. Um, the gang is in the office. They're, like, tearing everything up. They get the safe open. Uh, they, they see that there's nothing in it, like it's empty folders. Uh, Jack, he goes, oh, we've been routed out here, boys. Just be careful. And then we see a cop. This cop goes in. One says, freeze. And then shooting, shooting begins. Yep, and pretty much Eckhart has set up Jack um, with his own force. Well, his, uh, I don't know if they're dirty cops, but pretty much, you know, you have to listen to him. But, um, but yeah, Eckhart sets him up, and um, then Jim Gordon does arrive. Commissioner Gordon arrives a little short time after that and basically takes charge, telling Eckhart that, you know, he's not in charge. And basically Eckhart just kind of, slides off to the side and tries to kind of trying to ease his way out of there um, while the shooting and stuff is going on um, and then pretty much you know Batman ends up arriving and taking out some of the yeah uh, some of the henchmen and yeah. while also you know 
also come in uh, encountering Jack himself. Yeah. Um, um, I'm, something about Batman yeah. in this man is uh, he he fucking kills people like. He, yeah. There's numerous deaths in this movie caused by Batman. Like, you're supposed to, you know, live by this moral code of, you know, don't people don't kill people, but you're fucking killing people. <laughs> yeah, he definitely was more more brutal in this one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, he uh, arrives and starts um, fighting some of the henchmen, and um, Jack himself ends up getting caught. Well, ends up uh, running into Batman and basically just kind of same position hemmed up yeah. while bob uh his right hand man uh jack's right hand man is threatening commissioner gordon to shoot him so he does let jack go for you know a little brief second yeah. and then afterwards jack uh gets his payback on eckhart for setting him up and yeah. for shoots him says think about the future yeah. and just Boom. shoots him and then, oh, um, yeah, and then he's they're still up there. Um, Batman comes back. Jack turns around to shoot him. Uh, Batman, you know, puts his gauntlet up. It bounces off, hits uh, like one of the little containers, and then ricochets. Yeah, ricochets off of that. Hits Jack in the face. Uh, Jack goes over the balcony. Uh, Batman grabs him. He uh, you know, he tries to hang on, but he ends up dropping him to a vat of chemicals. Um, Big old batch of acid. Yep. And then, uh, you know, the, the police, they see Batman. Uh, they think, like, freeze. Batman throws his little smoke capsule down, goes up, disappears. Um, after that, um, it cuts to a shot outside of Axis Chemicals. I don't know if this is a sewer or if it's just, like, a place where the chemicals go. But then you see uh, the, the deck of cards that Jack had. They come up to the surface. And then you see a hand pop up. The uh, pretty disfigured at this point, but uh, yeah. So after all that goes down, um, the next scene cuts to uh, Vicky, um, who she has dinner with Bruce at his mansion, sitting like feet acro- across from him, across from the table. Yes, long ass is... executive like dining table, <laughs> like you you'd see it like a like a big board meeting. Um, you know, Bruce is like asking yeah, her, sure, "How's the soup?" And uh, she, she she can't really hear him that well. Uh, she asks him to pass the salt, and then she goes, "Do you like eating in here?" Um, he said at first, like he shakes his head, yeah, and he goes, "You know, to tell you the truth, I don't think I've ever been in this room before." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wow, well, but yeah, they end up uh, they end up go ahead and move into the actual kitchen, which is a little more personable. Um, and they, you know, are talking just to Alfred about Bruce's upbringing and everything else and i mean pretty much this scene just kind of wraps up to um you know them kind of hitting it off and them starting to you know like each other and etc yeah and then uh the next scene cuts to was it an operating location would you call it or some yeah, type it was, of sketchy something looking like real sketchy back lot like plastic surgeon um you see him in there um he's you know he tells him to take the bandages off he starts unwrapping him. The dude gets like real annoyed with it, so he does it. Um, he asks for a mirror. Um, he sees his reflection, starts busting out laughing, breaks it, and like takes off. Um, Space. Yep. Cuts back to uh, Bruce and Vicky at the mansion. Um, they're both like drunk. Um, they end up they do the nasty. But of course, they didn't show it. Um. It cuts back to uh, Grissom's office. He's, uh, you know, hot out the shower. Uh, forces himself a drink. He hears somebody come in. Um, turns around. Uh, it's Jack. Of course, he doesn't. He doesn't think Jack is still alive, but he is. And, um, you know, basically he just tells him, you know, you made a big mistake selling me out for this woman. And Jack tries, not Jack, but Carl tries to do his best to... Um, to persuade him that you know they should let bygones be bygones and move on and jack just pretty much or isn't hearing it anymore and once he uh tells him you know let's make a deal yep. and he goes jack jack is dead but you can call oh, me the joker the joker and as you can see i'm a lot happier happy. yep starts... and basically proceeds to just yep. just keep shooting him multiple times and basically every 
<laughs> like six shots he fires at him. Just each one's just like real more comical than the other one. He's like, oh, shoots behind between the legs and all that shit. It was just, it was pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, but he's having a good old time getting his payback on Carl. So after shooting him, uh, it's obvious Carl is dead. So now, uh, next scene cuts to uh, at least, well, I think you already said Vicky was basically sleeping in Bruce's bed, and then basically wakes up in the middle of the night and sees him. Swinging upside down, which is not the most normal thing, but yeah, I guess really, it's really weird. <laughs> you know, Bruce is Batman. We know that his night is not like everybody else's night. Yeah. Um. The go ahead, the next go ahead, the next yeah, part. So, so it cuts back. Uh, Joker's sitting at Grissom's desk. Um, he sees the paper talking about Batman. Um, and he says, uh, I'll "Wait till they get a load of me." Um, it cuts to the next day, um, Vicky and Bruce are still in his room, uh, Vicky's trying to convince him, like, hey, we should do lunch, and at first, like, Bruce is like, yeah, and he says, oh, no, wait, I can't, I have, uh, I have an out-of-town meeting today, um, she says, well, we'll do it when we get back, uh, she leaves, uh, she tells Alfred she'll see him when they get back, and Alfred looks rather confused, he says, oh, we'll be here for a while, yeah, so she's pretty much, you know, just getting like, oh, well, something's going on. But but the next scene cuts to a meeting um, that Joker has now called with the other bosses. And um, basically they just tell him, you know, who are you to make any kind of, you know, tell us what to do. You know, you're not Carl. And one of the uh, one of the bosses, I think it's Antoine, uh, basically questions him and what he said. Yeah. So he says, uh, what if we say no? And he says, oh, well, see, nobody wants a war, but then he goes, why don't we shake on it? So then he puts his hand out, shakes it, fucking electrocutes the shit out of this guy. Like, his fucking head is frying, like, his smoke coming up, he's, like, turning red, you know, Joker's sitting there joking, laughing and singing. Um, the body, like, drops down, it's, like, nothing but, like, a fried... Skeleton. Yeah, skull <laughs> at this point. Um, all of Joker's, like, little goons come in, um... Uh, they, uh, he tells them all to get out. Um, one of the bosses, he says, you're crazy. And he goes, haven't you ever heard of the healing power of laughter? And he starts laughing again. They all leave. Uh, Joker. And pretty much, you know, there's a small scene, which, um, I mean, he's pretty much, Joker, is, he's talking to Bob and pretty much mocking Carl when he. Told, uh, what Carl told him earlier about yeah. him now being his number one guy. So. You are my number one uh, guy. Guy. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then uh, Bob was just kind of like, cool. So, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, then you see, you see Joker he's sitting there. Um, he's talking to the corpse of uh, Tony Rotelli. You know, he's like, uh, he says, oh, you want me to grease him now? He goes, uh, you're a, you are a vicious bastard, Rotelli. And I'm glad you're dead. And then just starts bust out laughing. That shit was so funny, man. It was it was great. It was yeah, awesome. At this point, there's a lot of humor, a lot of <clears throat> dark humor going on. But um, <clears throat> but yeah, after that, um, I think the next scene cuts to Vicky. Now she's following Bruce, which he is going down the alley where he lays a rose down on the ground, um, which she. A little bit curious of what's going on and why Bruce Wayne is so mysterious. Then the next scene cuts to another, um, well, one of the bosses, Vinny. He holds a press conference, uh, basically just announcing that he is in charge, even though Joker just told them that that wasn't the case. So Joker, he... Um, he goes ahead and executes him in public so everybody knows the true deal and who's in charge and basically throws a pin at him. Uh, yep. Throws a pin at him. Yep. And... He says, uh, he says, uh, the sig- he says, it is legitimate. He said, I saw it. I was there. Um, he reached out with his dead hand and signed it in his own blood. He did it with this pin. And then he looks at him he goes, uh, hello, Vinny. It's your Uncle Mingo. It's time to pay the check. And then throws it right in his fucking neck. Um, he says, the pen is truly or truly mightier than the sword. And then you just hear gunshots, fucking mimes Everybody that were... firing. Yeah, the mimes that were yeah. shooting everywhere just start firing. Um, in the midst of all this, Bruce gets grazed, uh, which doesn't seem to really phase him as something has put him in a trance where yep. he's just kind of 
looking at uh, Joker um, yep. leaving in his vehicle. Because yep. he, he, uh, he realizes that uh, the Joker is Jack Napier. Um, the next scene, uh, you know, Vicky goes up to Bruce. Uh, he looks at her for a minute and takes off. He goes, uh, it shows the next scene then cuts to a TV. Uh, the news is covering uh, what happened, They're talking to the mayor. Um, then he, like he's talking, he says something about Batman, and then you see a big boxing glove come up and just like punch the TV. Um, the Joker, he's like the Batman. Batman. Can it, somebody what tell me of... world, what kind of world we live in, where a man dressed up as a bat gets all my press? <laughs> this town needs an enema. <laughs> so yeah, he's basically just Batman's giving him all kind of grief now, but um. During uh, another scene, he uh, comes across a picture of Vicky, who he's smitten with. So yep. basically, it doesn't matter who has her. He is now about to make her trade up. Um, <clears throat> and then the next scene cuts to Joker. Um, there's not too much going on as far as uh, I don't think anything big that we missed after uh, no, you know, just, he, uh, the picture first... scene. But yeah, but the next scene is when um, we see basically Joker in the factory, the chemical factory, um, telling them to ship out some stuff. And then in the next scene is the, uh, the live news show where um, the hosts are just talking about, you know, daily news things. And then Anchor. one of the uh, anchors start laughing uncontrollably, uncontrollably and then falling out of her chair. And uh, pretty much after that, the Joker... Um, comes on the screen and just telling everyone about all these products that um that are in stores that he has put out there and we uh cut back to the anchor which now she is revealed to have a mutilated face kind of similar to the jokers yep. and um pretty much in the commercials he's just telling them you know go ahead and buy your most important products you might end up like this yeah. he's, oh, sorry, you probably already bought them so everybody doesn't want to be buying brand was it no his version is not brand x no it's smilex <laughs> smilex yeah so so yeah pretty much after uh that whole incident uh he puts gotham city in a state of paranoia and, sc and scare where nobody is really using any kind of hygienic things no one's using deodorant no one's <laughs> yep goes back uh, to another um, a, a newspaper shows up talking about uh, like the Joker's products. Um, another uh, news report on the TV with a different female reporter this time. Same guy. Um, you can tell they both haven't showered in God knows how long. Uh, the male reporter he's starting to get you know acne on his face. Um, it cuts to the mayor's office. He still you know wants a celebration of Gotham's 200th anniversary. Like that's, apparently that's all he fucking cares about. Um, yeah. Then it gets to Wayne Manor, where Alfred is listening to uh, a voicemail left by Vicky Vale um, about being ten minutes late to the museum. Alfred tells Bruce, then Bruce is like, "Wait a minute, I'm I'm not seeing her today." Um, right. It goes to uh, Joker. I guess now it would be Joker's, you know, Manor penthouse or whatever. Um, he's putting on his makeup to go out. Um, then at least it's kind of unusual because I think I would have thought it would be the other way around, but no, his actual underneath exterior is the white makeup, I and mean, he puts stuff on top of it to look well, not exactly yep. normal, but look like he's Jack again somewhat. Yep. But then, go ahead. Alicia comes out. She goes, uh, Jack. I thought you were going to let, or where are you going? And he goes, Daddy, or he goes, Sweetheart, Daddy's going to make some art. Um, yeah, the next and by scene, this point, Alicia, I guess it's maybe important to point out that at this point, Alicia is like, probably for worse now. I mean, yep. <laughs> I mean, now he's kind of, his twisted, demented is kind of rubbing off on her in yep. some ways. You see her like but, throughout um, uh, until. The end, of course, a spoiler where she gets, you know, she dies. Um, she's wearing a white mask over her face, right. which we end up seeing here in just a very short time. Um, the next scene goes, Vicky is seen. She's going to the, uh, she's going to the, mm -hmm. uh, she's in the uh, museum. Uh, she sits at a table, which was in Bruce's name. Uh, she's like waiting a while. You know, she's getting kind of antsy, tapping on the table. And then all of a sudden a gift is brought to her. Uh, 
she opens it up. It's a gas mask with a note that says, put uh, put this on right now. And then that's when uh, gas starts filling uh, up the room where, and everybody starts passing out. Everybody's knocked out, and then who comes in when everybody's knocked out? The Joker. Joker. And they, they start having a good time. Yep, painting, probably. Uh, fixing i think they called it fixing the paintings yep it's uh, um, prob one of my probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie he comes in he goes gentlemen let's broaden our minds let's broaden our minds lawrence, lawrence? <laughs> he puts on party man while they're all just like fucking up the paintings and like he's jokers acting goofy uh he goes over to like one statue where they're like posing and he starts like making fun of it <laughs> it was so good so and he funny knocks off uh, but then like they're basically just you said destroying everything, and then there's just one painting in there that looks kind of distorted that he seems to actually like, and that's the only painting he doesn't allow them to actually damage or yeah, destroy. Like, uh, he goes, no, Bob. He goes, uh, I actually kind of like this one. I like this one. <laughs> but, yeah, so after all that, um, he sits down with Vicky and ba pretty much just tells her, you know, you know, I feel like, you know, um, you and me are the same. We're both artists, and just pretty much not know what he's talking about and the point where it goes over uh, pretty much you know goes into her affiliation with batman and how she knows him and starts to kind of get a little more um starts to get a little more crazy gets a little more you know she starts to scare a little more so yeah. then she just at one point she gets <laughs> scared enough and just throws water on him but this is after he uh tries to like Shoot, with yeah, the... shoot her with the acid. Um, yeah, um, a couple of things before that. Uh, you know, he tells her uh, why he's great, why he's destined for greatness. He's the world's first functioning homicidal artist. Um, he brings in Alicia, who uh, takes off the mask and shows her like just fucked up looking face. Um, she gets, you know, she gets up from the table. She gets kind of scared. Um, there was at one point she asked, like, so uh, how can I help you? He goes, oh, a little song, a little dance, Batman's head on a lance. Um, yeah. he, uh, you know, she says she don't know anything about Batman. Uh, she, he says, well, how about me and you? And she goes, oh, you're crazy. He goes, oh, I thought I was, a, you're insane. I thought I was a Pisces. And then he goes, like, shoot her with the flower. Uh, she gets to the table where there's like a little water th container there. She throws it in his face. You know, he's acting out. Oh, I'm melting. I'm oh, melting. Uh, she goes over to him. He turns around and says, boo, and starts laughing. Batman comes to the rescue, um, crashing into the museum, and um, pretty much takes uh, Vicky, uh, well, his, uh, the bat cling. I'm trying to remember the actual weapon, but... Uh, Long story short, basically, he rescues her from the museum, and they are on a chase um, from the henchmen, which yep. he, they're both in the Batmobile, just, uh, you know, going around Gotham City trying to get away. And then at one point, they stop the, um, stop the Batmobile, and he puts, like, a shield, activates a shield, and it basically just covers the whole Batmobile. Yeah. And then he puts her... Um, he asks her like how much she weighs and then he like yeah. <laughs> lifts her up on the thing <laughs> yep and then uh, he drops down uh he starts kind of like fighting with the henchmen uh they end up shooting him he's kind of plays dead for a minute and they're all looking at him he goes oh this this is no uh he's like no bullet holes or something and he goes it's just body armor so he is human after all he goes take his mask off and like uh, when they go to take off the mask he's like vicky's you know she's up on the roof she uh, snaps a picture, which distracts them. Uh, Batman gets up, starts, you know, kicking all their asses. Um, yeah, and then the guy with the swords, that part is just... Yeah. I don't know what it is about that part where he's just standing in one place, just ching, 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 ching. Like, like he literally does nothing up until the point where he just kicks the crap out of him. <laughs> yeah. And Batman's just standing there. He's, like, got his, like, you know, fists up, like, uh, come on. <laughs> and he finally comes, just kicks him. Um, he yeah, looks at Bob. He looks at Bob, who, like, pops up out of the back with a knife. He looks at him and goes, and then Bob's just like, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. gone. <laughs> All right. So, um, after that, basically, um, they get back into the uh, Batmobile and um, head towards the cave, Batcave, which um, pretty much all the way to the Batcave, Vicky is trying to 
who he might be, and he's just kind of looking at her, you know, back and trying to keep his eye on the road, and at the same time, just like watching her. I kind of think, uh, like, but they do. Like, bitch, leave me alone. Like, stop staring at me. Right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's dark too, so you can barely like see his eyes for the most part. But um, yeah, they ride to the Bat Cave, and he pretty much just tells her, you know, what's going on with the whole product situation and that mixing. The chemicals is what's killing everybody, or what's the daily combination is it's the chemical. So gives her the um, gives her the information to pass along to the press so that everybody can prevent from using the products in question, and um, not before getting <laughs> not getting the evidence, getting the getting the film from her. Yeah, she goes. Uh, she's like, well, "Why did you bring me here?" And uh, he goes, "Well, you have something I want." And he, like, lifts up his cape. You hear, like, bats, like, screeching in the background. Um, cuts back to her apartment, I guess, the next day. She's, like, uh, laying across the bed. Uh, she wakes up. She's checking for the film. She realizes that, oh, he took it. Um, the phone rings. Uh, no it's Knox on the phone. Asks if she's okay. Um, if she if wants to come over. Um, she says no, but wants to know if, uh, if he she brought him something. If they could make the evening edition. Um... She's like, oh, just barely. He's like, is it hot? And she goes, oh, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> it's real hot. Um, and then it shows, like, a, like a newspaper truck pulls up to a newsstand, throws out the paper, um, shows the front page, shows, like, uh, what products to avoid. Uh, the news anchor says, uh, you know, pretty much says, like, the same thing, what to avoid. Um, and all of Gotham are wondering what to make of Batman. Is he a friend or a foe? Um... Then cuts to Joker. He, he says, uh, a second TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he says, I have given a name to my pain, and it's Batman. He shoots the TV and hmm. goes, You must possess strength to inflict pain, Bob. We've got a flying mouse to kill, and I want to clean my claws. Yeah, a lot of classic lines from Jack Nicholson. And um, so basically... Um, I mean, there's not too much after that, basically, just leading up to this this scene. Uh, Alfred is pretty much trying to tell Bruce, you know, maybe it's time for you to stop being so close to everybody and actually let somebody in. And which, um, I'm sorry, which uh, Bruce gets the courage to actually, um, well, he attempts to tell her that he's Batman. He goes to her apartment and... Um, Attempts to confess to her that he's Batman, but after multiple attempts at, they basically he for some reason he just can't he can't get it out. So they're interrupted by the Joker once again, who comes in and basically just tells you know, just um just again trying to forcibly forcefully um, have Vicky fall for him, and Bruce ends up. Entering the room and talks a little bit about Jack Napier, who Joker kind of seems to pretend that he doesn't know who Jack Napier yeah, is anymore says, since he's I Joker. I like this guy. Yep. And yeah. then uh, it shows the scene like where Batman, they're over by the fireplace. Uh, he grabs the poker, like smashes on the thing and says, you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. And then and the famous uh, line. Yep. Joker asks him the famous line. He says, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Um, Bruce looks at him like, what? And he goes, it's some, something I ask all my prey. And he, I like the sound of it. And then shoots Bruce, who uh, falls to the ground. Um, he also, Joker also looks and he says, uh, never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> and yeah. <he> starts laughing. <laughs> and, yeah. And basically he leaves and tells her, you know, I'm, uh, he said, I am crying on the inside, but I'm only laughing on the out. And then basically yeah. just... Just wanders off of the <laughs> wanders off out of the apartment and then like goes and then just like walks away. But um yeah, yeah a lot that, of it was a good I like that scene. <laughs> yeah, the part where he's like he's outside and he goes <laughs> and then like takes off. That was funny. Um and then yeah, Vicky goes Vicky back. Turns around. Yeah. yeah. She goes back. Um she notices that Bruce is gone, but notices like a square metal like plate. Uh, is on the yeah. ground with a bullet stuck in it. Um, she goes back to uh, the the gift that was left on the table. She opens it up, and a severed hand pops out with dead flowers. So, yeah, and she faints, and then 
cuts to the next scene, which um, is, um, I think the next scene is Knox basically um, revealing to Vicky that Bruce's parents were killed in the alley that she saw them in earlier. Yep. And basically just says, um, what do you think this does to a kid? Which, yep. you know, <laughs> what happens. Yep, so, she, yeah, she, uh, go ahead. I was say, uh, yeah, she just, uh, she goes, she rushes off. Uh, he's, he, you know, he's like, oh, don't get too, don't get personal. Um, and then cuts back to Bruce in the Batcave. Um, he asks Alfred to get the file, if he got the file for his parents. It's on his table. Um, he asks Alfred what's on his mind. He says, I have no wish to fill my last few remaining years grieving over the loss of old friends or their sons. And that's pretty much telling me he's taking it a little, a little too much, not taking it too far, but as I said earlier, he's closing himself off to everybody else to fulfill his commitment as Batman. So Alfred's at the point where he's just kind of, you know, it's like you don't want to do this forever. But um, pretty much, you know, after that, um, is it the flashback? Um, no. Um, he, I believe, the next scene. Uh, Joker. Is, um, yeah, the, the mayor. In the live. Yeah, the mayor yeah. is at City Hall. You know, he pretty much says that uh, the 200th anniversary uh, gala is uh, postponed indefinitely because um, they can't guarantee the safety of the citizens. Uh, Joker cuts in. Um, he's, you know, he mentions like you know the mean things that people said about him. Uh, talks about Grissom for a minute, how he took over, and says that he's not a killer. He's an artist and loves a good party. Um, he has a surprise for Gotham. Uh, he'll dump twenty million dollars in cash on the crowd, and he also uh, pretty much like declares like a big like fight with Batman. He calls it the old Dukeroo. Ask him who do you trust, Batman or a guy who's going to be handing you money? So long story short, um, after making that proposition, uh, it does cut back to Bruce, who he does have a flashback of his parents being murdered. And um, during the uh, in the scene, we ask him. We see a man in the shadows who um, is the one to pull the trigger to shoot both of his parents, and asks him a similar question to what he heard, um, asking if you've ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight. And out of the shadow comes a young Jap Napier, who is revealed to be the person who murdered uh, Bruce's parents as a kid. Um, so it tells you that Jack has had issues for yep. for a long time. Yep, he, uh, and then, he he aims the gun at Bruce, um, one of the other uh, goons that was there. You know, he tells he's like, "Come on, Jack, let's go." Um, and then you see Napier. He's like, "I'll see you around, kid." Um, cuts back to uh, adult Bruce, who realizes that Napier's the one that killed his parents. Um, Alfred enters the Batcave with Vicky. Um, I wonder. I, I just imagine at some point. Behind the scenes, Bruce like slapped the shit out of Alfred for for doing that. Right. <laughs> like, why the fuck would you do that, you dumbass? <laughs> well, there's actually in the next movie in Batman Returns, it's actually a funny scene, which we'll talk about it when we talk about Batman Returns. But it's kind of he basically touches on this subject, like him letting Vicky in the Batcave. But um, but yeah, like you said, Vicky uh, enters the Batcave, basically revealing that he's Batman, etc. And this is just going into this whole spiel, like. You know, <laughs> saying, you know, yeah, when are right. you going to let me in? And he's like, you're in. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you got in. Uh, and yeah. she goes, uh, are we ever gonna be? Are we ever going to be able to love each other? Um, he goes, I'd like that. But right now he's out there um, and I've got I've got to go to work. Um, and then shoot, it shows a shot of Batman putting on the suit. Um, and then it shows him like kind of like staring off with the, the epic music playing in the background. Um, and then comes like the big climactic scene where uh, the Batmobile he ro rolls in through Axis Chemicals. Um, it stops like in the middle. And he drops like a little round circular thing, which turns out to be a bomb. Um, Axis Chemicals pretty much yep. blows up everybody blows up. in the yeah more murder from Batman. I mean, there <laughs> you see like the shots of like where it's rolling through, and you see all these fucking henchmen like circling like the Batmobile shooting at it, and then all of a sudden. After it, like, blows up, he's just rolling through, and there's, like, no one there. So, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, he, he kills people. 
Batman well, kills people. I guess at this point, though, I guess it's a necessary for what he's dealing with with Joker. But, but yeah, he blows up the whole plant, whole factory, and then um, the Joker is actually already in the sky in the copter and the chopper on his way to um, the celebration. Um, yeah, kind of taunts so, Batman a little bit. So pretty much the next scene cuts to uh, Joker now um, going through the city on uh, float, uh, yep. which is in there, you know, dancing and, um, yep. the trust and by you know, throwing money out, yeah, uh, dancing to trust, which I, this is, I think, is Jack Nicholson's, like, he, like, just the way he was moving to the, like, like, it's just, it just goes with it, like, just the whole just yep. him just being silly and being over exaggerating like you know just being over over the top when he's dancing and stuff it just went with the the whole song um and he's just you know throwing cash out to the people in the uh in the street and uh Knox comes and says look at this gotham's greed yep oh, and, and, uh, there's a shot before that like <clears throat> where the bat wing is flying around uh it's really cool um, and then he comes back to Joker, where he's like, and now, folks, it's time for who do you trust? Hubba, 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 money, money, money. Me? I'm giving away free money. And where's the Batman? He's at home, washing his tights. And then basically breaks out in that iconic laughter. And then um, pretty much a short while after that, Batman arrives in the Batwing, and um, pretty much they were on him in. Um, and then, you know, pretty much... Joker, he reveals his true colors and unleashes deadly gas out on Gotham City. Yep. Um, and he goes, uh, and now comes the part where I relieve you, the little people, of the burden of your failed and useless lives. But as my plastic surgeon always says or said, yeah. uh, if you're gonna, if you gotta go, go out with a smile. Wow. Oh. And then presses the uh, the float is what's carrying the the deadly gas. So you know they unleashes that and. Uh, pretty much everybody is, you know, well, no one ha has a mask on, so every mu everyone is pretty much in danger. And then um, all the chaos and stuff is going on. So Batman is able to commandeer the floats and take them away, getting them out of harm's way. Which Joker then says, took my balloons. Yeah. He stole my <laughs> balloons. Why didn't someone tell me he has one of those things? <laughs> And he, uh, he says, Bob, gun. So Bob gives him the gun. Joker shoots him. It's pretty much just reduced nonchalantly. Just, he just... <laughs> gun. Gosh. Yep. I think we'll need a minute, boys. Yep. So then uh, you see kind of a couple of scenes of like, people you know, running. Uh, the Batwing is coming down. It's getting all armed. You know, guns popping out. Bombs showing out. Um, I think he starts shooting here at this point. Um, he like aims at the Joker. Um, Joker says, probably one of my favorite lines of the movie, he goes, come on, you gruesome son of a bitch, come to me. And then, uh, Batman, you know, he starts shooting, but nothing hits him. Um, th except the goons. There the are goons more warning get... shots. Yeah, the goons. I don't know, I, I the think goons there are warning shot. shots. <laughs> a couple yeah, of the goons, the goons get killed, because, you know, Batman's a fucking yeah. murderer, but, um, Joker pulls out this giant, huge barrel and revolver out of his pants, um, he shoots down the Batwing, and it, like, lands in front of Gotham Cathedral. Uh, Vicky, she runs to the Batwing. She's looking to see if Batman is there. Um, but Joker shows up with a gun aimed at her. Um, and then, uh, they, you know, get inside of the Cathedral. And, but, uh, of course, Batman pops out from the wreckage. You know, he looks pretty beat up. He follows him inside. Yeah, so, basically, pretty much, um... The Joker takes Vicky to the, uh, well, they're just going to the top of the cathedral where he plans to make his escape. And um, like you said, Batman is following them. And halfway up, halfway to the top, Batman uh, starts to also fight some more of his henchmen. And um, got this guy who pretty much is doing all these flips and all these yeah, acrobatic that, things. And that was, that was he just puts, And he just pretty much after all that just puts his hands up and... Guy just falls down. And yeah, he it's like over. has something in his suit. He just like pops out. He just stops him. Yeah, uh, just stops him. Yeah, the the and second then, guy just he hop he like flips over and then just falls through the floor. Like eat shit, you fucking jabroni, and just like goes through the floor and dies. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, sure, whatever. 
Then the last guy, he's the big guy. He's actually the one who's yeah, giving fucking... Batman the most trouble and pretty much beats just beats his ass. The crap a, out of him for a hot minute, man. Just beats his ass. Yeah, oh. pretty much she's throwing him around like just throwing him around and all that stuff. So, I mean, at one point, basically, he just they're um, they're um, over the uh, the bill the bill uh i don't know what you would call that but basically um over the bill that leads to the down part of the church and the guy thinks he has kicked batman on down to the you know on down and batman is just kind of hiding and then takes his uh legs puts him across the guy's neck and then Performs just literally the rings his bell yeah pretty much rings his bell literally <laughs> and then the guy falls you know all the way down yeah, I think they be found again. I thought they both fell at one point, or at, like while watching. I thought like uh, I thought they were the guy was like holding on to Batman, or Batman was holding on to him. I think they both. I don't know if they both fell or if it was just the one guy. Oh, uh, Batman! He um he falls down first, but that's when he was just trying to lure that guy uh, so that he could bring him out enough to where he could catch him with those, like you said, that head scissors, and um get him uh get him taken care of but um after that and then cuts to uh the scene of joker basically just dancing around with vicky and you know <laughs> yeah, kind of going uh, crazy yeah she noticed she kind of notices like batman's there so to like uh distract the joker like she starts like kissing on him um and it looks like she's going down to give him you know the old uh the old one two with the a little bit of throat action there um, and then Batman looks up, he says, excuse me, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? He just fucking punches Joker right in the face. Um, pretty much just bust, just pretty much just beating the crap out of him, and then we get that, that gag where he just basically hits him, and then the goat, the Joker, he like spits out this, these like mechanical teeth. And yeah. like, dang. Yeah, and at one point, uh, you know, Batman looks at him and says, I'm going to kill you. And he goes, you idiot, you made me. You think I forgot it about what happened back at the at the chemical plant? Believe me, I tried. And he says, "I know." And he starts punching him again. And I think he spits out the teeth. Um, he tells, uh, I think, uh, yeah. So it was after he spit out the teeth. I think he did that as a distraction. You see, Joker like uh, he punches him in the in the stomach, but it hurts his hand instead. Um, he tells. Uh, Joker that, you know, it was Joker the one that killed his parents. Um, you know, Batman's like, uh, I made you, you made me. And then Joker kind of like breaks the fourth wall there. <laughs> it seems like he says, uh, I mean, I, he's like, uh, you know, Bat Brain. He's like, you say, I made you, you made me. Uh, kind of how childish can you get? And then he pulls right. like a pair of glasses out and says, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? And then, of course, he punches Joker who falls over the, the balcony. Yeah, and then basically um, they think that he's gone, and he outsmarts both of them and pulls them down on the balcony, which both of them are hanging at fingertips um, of the church, and pretty much, you know, they stay that way and while the chopper is arrived to pick up Joker, and while he's um, on his way to the chopper, he's just taunting both of them, you know, just telling them, you know, so just taunting them, and... He pretty much gets to the chopper ladder, and then Batman takes his um, his weapon, and he ties his foot on top of the gargoyle, which basically puts a lot of weight on his foot, so he can't really he can't really move. But some way, he's able to pull the gargoyle off the freaking statue, yeah. and it's pretty much just dangling from the chopper ladder mid sky <laughs> to where you know he can't hold on anymore, so Drops he falls death. off. All the way down. Yeah. And then, how, and, how he didn't like explode into you know pieces from. I mean, they were pretty fucking high up, man. Like at a drop yeah. like that, the, the the body would probably just burst into blood and all over like broken bones and everything. But uh, he uh. My cousins, yeah, pretty much. It's just in his the leg, the statue was on his leg too. So yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure that was a pretty gruesome more than what we saw afterwards. But go ahead. Yep. So then uh, <laughs> after he drops, uh, Batman and Vicky drop. Um, but Batman, you know, luckily he has the the grapple gun. He uh, fires it, and they're able to just hang on for a minute. Um, it cuts to uh, people. You know, they're surrounding the body of Joker, but um, you can hear like a this laughter coming. 
uh, from somewhere. And uh, Gordon reaches in his coat pocket, finds like this little bag that has like some sort of laugh like thing in it, is like making the laughing noise. Um, after that, and then death, he's laughing and smiling. Yep. After that, um, you know, it's like a press conference. Um, you see, he goes uh, in the in the uh, subtitles, like it said that it was a. Uh, it was Dent that was saying it, but it kind of sounded like Gordon. Um, he's like, our police have rounded up all Joker's men. The reign of crime is over. Public safety is no longer a laughing matter. Uh, we see Vicky, she's kind of standing by. Knox comes up, you know, he asks her about, oh, about our Pulitzer Prize, about us, and what about your pictures of Batman. Uh, she kisses him on the cheek and leaves. Um, Harvey Dent, uh, and, you know, he brings up a letter that they received from Batman earlier in the day. He says, please inform the citizens of Gotham that Gotham City has earned a rest from crime, but if the forces of evil should rise again to cast a shadow on the heart of the city, call me. And of course, Knox goes up. He has to have his, his word in there. He says, how do we know when to call him? Um, Gordon goes, uh, he left the signal, which he flashes it on. It's the iconic bat signal that we see throughout uh, Batman's history in the comics and TV and movies and all that good stuff. The iconic symbol, the signal, but um, yeah. Next scene cuts to Vicky um being picked up by Alfred um for what we presume is a day with Bruce, in which he tells her that you know he might be late, and of course she says, uh, "Why am I not surprised?" And then the last scene basically cuts to Batman now standing on top of Gotham City, looking out with the signal flashing now and yep. ready for whatever's next to come. Yep. And, and then end credits that's right. it no uh, no end, no post credit scenes no nothing this is in the days of movies <laughs> this is the day of movies where there were no post credit scenes to get the fans more into it it was just that's it credits roll <laughs> yeah it's you're going to have to wait a year <laughs> yeah. or two for the next trailer for the movie but um, yeah. um i think was it yeah that comes out the movie then um uh, baby returns came uh, out in like what 92 i think yeah that was a one, two, three, almost a three-year gap between yep. the original and um, the next one. But um, well, yeah, but that closes out the movie, and basically, um, you know, the credits roll, and they play "Scandalous," another Prince song during the credits. But yeah, that was that's Batman 1989, which yep. we finally got around to it. So as far as a few fun facts, I was seeing. Um, before we got started, which I'll just go through some of these kind of quickly, so we don't take, we're not taking up another, well, taking up a lot of time, and then whatever you want to add, you can. Um, so pretty much, it shows that um, in the process of uh, in production, there was a lot of people that were looked at or interested to play uh, Batman, Bruce Wayne. Um, they said that there was the likes of Mel Gibson. Um, who else we got here? Mel Gibson, Charlie Sheen, Kevin Costner, Tom Selleck, could Bill, you just imagine, Bill Murray. Could you just imagine fucking Mel Gibson playing Batman? Like, that just sounds so ridiculous. Yeah, well, at that time, he was, well, I don't know, Mel Gibson was kind of older at that time. Lethal Weapon, I think, was 87, so, well, no, no, um, could be wrong, I think Lethal Weapon, one of the Lethal Weapons come out, came out the same year as Batman, but in any case, yeah, Mel Gibson is, I don't know if he could have, I don't know if he could have pulled that off, but, um, and they also had Bill Murray, which, that's kind of a, I, could, I don't know, no, I don't know if I could see, I definitely could uh, see Bill Murray in a serious role like yeah. that, <laughs> then Harrison Ford, and then also Dennis Quaid, he was, yeah. um, in talks to play, and, um, Actually had another um they had another unknown actor at the time who um they were interested in playing Bruce Wayne. Um at that time a unknown William Defoe. William Defoe. Yes, who, uh, now one, we've... Of, one of my favorite actors. Uh, the Green Goblin yep. or also uh, Agent Paul Smecker in the Boondock Saints, which is a movie that we need to cover at some point cuz it's yeah. awesome. Definitely. Um, yeah, unknown actor at that time he was, you know, Things would have went that way, you know. They would have went that way, but like you said, we've come to know him as 
of our time, the Green Goblin and yep. um, other things. Yep. Well, go ahead. I don't know if you're saying anything else. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, yeah, there, there was also another superhero movie came out around this time starring uh, the one Dolph Lundgren, uh, The Punisher. The original Punisher oh, yes, came out 89, the same year that Batman came out. Um, unfortunately, because, you know, the Bat- Batman was such a big box office hit, the Punisher kind of went unknown, kind of didn't really make it very far in the box office, which I've seen the movie a little bit. It didn't really seem that good anyway. Um, there are definitely a lot of better Punisher uh, actors. Adaptations. Yeah, adaptations, definitely a lot better ones. Um, but I think uh, the Punisher movies should be one that ones that we review at some point as well because Punisher is fucking awesome. <laughs> one of my favorite right. characters. I've never seen the first Punisher, the... Um... The actual movie, I think, with John Travolta, but well, you're talking about the one with Dolph, the one from the '80s. But yeah, sooner or later, we we have to, yeah, we have to revisit those. Yep. But um, I guess another um, another interesting fact is some of the names that were um, uh, some of the names that were looked at to play Joker before um, Jack Nicholson Jack Nicholson took the role was Tim Curry, which we. Well, this was 89, so he would have just been going into the It miniseries, and then David Bowie, which that would have been interesting. David Bowie is the yeah. Joker. Um, and then, uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, uh, as far as you say, uh, you say uh, Tim Curry was considered for the Joker. I think that that one might be interesting, kind of odd, because, uh, you know, most of uh, Tim Curry's roles, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's a British actor, so most of his roles, uh, He's uh, he uses yeah. his British accent, so I don't think uh, that one really wouldn't work for me. I don't think uh, that or David Bowie um, either. I don't know, um, because if you think about like if you can remember it, the original miniseries, like all the scenes that he really had, you know, he didn't really speak with much of a. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe you're right. I, maybe I just since I've seen it so many times, I never noticed the accent, but. Well, I mean, regardless, they both played iconic clown-like figures of that time. Yeah, so, yeah you're right. Um, but yeah, so it's yeah Tim Curry, David Bowie, and John Lithgow. Which anyone who doesn't know John Lithgow, he's an actor who plays in um, in the Twilight Zone, the movie. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, uh, no, I have not. Okay, well, yeah, John Lithgow. He's been in. He was in a bunch of '80s movies. Um, yeah. They also were looking at Brad Dourif, which Brad, Brad Dourif is Chucky, <laughs> um, which that would have actually been the year after you bitch, you first shot. But... <laughs> yeah, we can only imagine his. <laughs> <laughs> That's just I don't like... know. He may have could have done it, too. I mean, like these are all good actors. I mean, but. Of course, we've known them to be these other iconic characters now, so yeah, it's, it's like, just hard for us to look. It's funny, it's like when I think of Chucky, this like that's the the line I think of most. I can't remember which one it's from, where he goes, "You filthy bitch, you fucking slut," and then starts like. Honestly, it could be from any one of them. He usually goes off in some way yeah. in all these, in all the child's plays and some movies. But, but yeah, but then lastly, I think I see Ray Liotta, which. Ray Liotta would have just been going into Goodfellas at this time. Yeah, cause I think Goodfellas came out in uh, was it like? Uh, it was nineteen ninety. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I would think that they were shooting, starting to shoot around eighty nine ish. So, but anyway, everything worked out the way it was supposed to work out. And then last, um, I did forget. It does also say that for a moment they were actually eyeing Robin Williams as well to play the Joker. Uh, that one would be interesting for sure. Yeah, I definitely think he could have pulled that off. Um, but yeah, pretty much, you know, those were a few fun facts about, um, you know, the making of Batman and some of the casting, um, some of the casting stuff. Uh, but aside from that, is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, I do have some certain information about like the directors and stuff, but I don't think that's so important i think just the one thing i do show that as far as directors go before tim burton actually signed on it says that they actually were looking at west craven which yeah, that's kind of odd that. yeah which that's kind of an odd choice i mean you know i mean of course west craven he could put on a dark movie but you know he's a master of horror so that yeah, would have been yeah a, it would have been definitely interesting uh, yeah. um 
Yeah, I know. Um, Go ahead. There's a uh, one is a Tom Mankiewicz. Um, I was reading it here. It says uh, he completed a script uh, titled The Batman in uh, June of '83, which was you know originally focused on uh, Batman and Dick Grayson's origins with the Joker in it and uh, gangster Rupert Thorne. Who uh, actually he makes more of an appearance in the uh, Batman the Animated Series. Um, yeah, that script. Uh, I don't think uh, some or Marshall Rogers was hired to uh, work with uh, Englehart on uh, the. He was hired for the concept art, um, but uh, it's. Uh, I guess it just kind of fell through, um, just because they felt like it was going to be a little too campy. Um, and in that, uh, what they call it in Hollywood, I think it's called development hell, developmental hell, or something yeah. like that. So. Yeah. And at, at one point, uh, right, or Ivan Reitman, um, I believe, was also on board for that. Um, he wanted, uh, yeah, he wanted to cast uh, Bill Murray as Batman and Eddie Murphy as Robin, that which I think it just that just sounds really, yeah, really, that sounds, that, really. That weird. sounds like a. <laughs> That sounds like a definitely a parody, but um, but um, once we get on, um, I said once we get to like Batman Forever and stuff, like there are some interesting facts about that. Um, but yeah, as far as like the casting and everything else, like you said, pretty everything was pretty much in talks for almost seven almost seven years before they yep. got everybody, you know, Pat got everybody uh, that they wanted. Um, but yeah, as far as facts go, I mean, like I said, it was pretty much all I had, um, as far as things that I can really think of that I read that might be interesting or might come off interesting, but as far as going into closing thoughts, you're, I'll start with your closing thoughts. <clears throat> um, yeah, so in closing, you know, again, like I said before, this is just, it's an amazing movie, man. It's really good, it's really well produced, really well put together. Um, really brought Batman back into the uh, that realm of, you know, darkness and, you know, how it was when he first started back in the late 30s before the comics code came in and everything was just turned, aimed more at children. This is definitely not a children's movie. Um, I mean, kids can watch it and it's not a bad movie to watch. It is a comic book movie, it's a superhero movie, but at the end of the day, it's not like, you know, you're more modern avengers movies or thor like this it's a it's a really dark movie um so it's it's definitely something that like i said kids could watch but i mean it, it's a, a dark movie but it's really good um you know it, it predates i think you know, that what speaks to i think that what speaks to what i was saying earlier about me not actually um seeing it as a kid um like i said it could be numerous reasons as far as i just never got my hands on it but like you said i think to where when I was a kid and it had that more darker look to it like I wasn't as like you know it wasn't colorful like we'll get into like like I said we'll get into Batman Forever Batman and Robber and all that Batman yeah, Robin they, and, all this, and all the other films but um yeah, I, I guess it just it didn't look as like didn't appeal to a kid I guess as far as if you were my age like a six or seven um which I could be wrong I mean I, yeah, of course it's then, been at that once, time <laughs> Once we get into the Joel Schumacher ones, it just really, it really goes back to that level of camp. The '90s were just not a good time for comic book movies. I think the best, you know, comic movie to come out at that time was The Crow, which you know we've already done a review on. But no, then as far as superhero movies go, the '90s just kind of sucked. <laughs> you know, you get Tim Burton well, who did who did Batman Returns, which was good, but after that, it just. Uh... We're going to get into Batman Returns next time, and that's directed by Tim Burton. But as far as my closing thoughts, um, I mean, basically, just like you said, it's at this point, like I've just seen it so many times, but it's a classic that I can almost quote it word for word. And like I said the performances, like for Jack Nicholson, Michael Keaton, Kim Bassinger, like they're all just, they stand the test of time. And Definitely. like one thing that kind of like, also kind of makes me a little um makes me a little like as far as marvel movies these days is like of course you know like you said bat like we're saying batman and robin definitely has its following you know i guess people from a certain age group but 
You know, it doesn't always get its it doesn't always it doesn't always get its flowers. I feel like you said because it kicked it pretty much kicked off what has become now with the Marvel movies and all the other DC movies and etc. So yeah. just sometimes I don't think it gets its flowers. Like of course people, you know, like you said, when you say the Joker, they don't automatically think Jack Nicholson. They think Heath Ledger because of the Dark Knight and yeah, of course or, everything that went on with that. But they don't always give jack nicholson his flowers like yeah you know you did a dope job too as the joker so yeah man that's he was sick I, mean, I think jack nicholson's joker inspired uh the joker in the the animated series which is uh was a fantastic show a show that i watched growing up very good me too um, something I, I actually watch every night it's my comfort show to go sleep sometimes so i watch batman the animated series on hbo max and, uh, another but movie. um but, yeah. As I say, another movie we we need to review at some point is uh, Batman: Mask of the Phantasm, which uh, is it it's is an animated an, one, right? Yep, yep, it's an animated movie. It's also the first animated movie to get a theat- or animated Batman movie to get a theatrical release. Um, it's very limited, but it was a fucking incredible movie, and we need to review that one at some point too because I am a sucker when it comes to animation. I, yeah, I'm starting to get a little more into animation now myself. But, um, but, yeah, down the line, we definitely need to check that one out. Yeah, those are my closing thoughts. I mean, I love this movie. Um, one of my favorites. And like I oh, said yeah. before, most of the time I'll watch that 15 times over before I would watch a Marvel movie once or twice. Oh, because yeah. just I get, in general, I... I get so tired of the Marvel movies. They're, they're, they just make yeah. them, but they just wear them out to death, man. Man, I, like I, I said, I would even watch Batman Forever and Batman and Robin sometimes, but yeah. we'll talk about that later. Uh, but that's just how much, like I said, you know, these this one especially stands the test of time. Um, but I'm glad we covered it finally. We oh, yeah. got the first one out the way, and yep. then next time we'll be discussing 1992 Batman Returns, which yep. that one I really do hope we can, like, because... There's a lot of characters in Batman Returns and a oh, yeah. lot of stuff going on. So, that, that, like I said, I've seen Batman Returns enough times where I know everything, but taking notes probably might be a little more, um, a little more hard on that one because, like I said, there are so many characters and so many, like you know, you got pretty much you got two backstories and two villains that we have to cover in that one. They yeah. both have their each have their own backstory so we're gonna have to figure a way to kind of try to cover all that <laughs> yeah oh yeah definitely and it, it's definitely gonna be awesome to review that one I, i'll probably have to take a yeah. bunch of notes too because we're uh i haven't seen this one in a while batman returns and the other ones after that i haven't seen in such a long time so i need to well, really go yeah. back and take notes on those that one we're gonna definitely have to do the best we can but but we're gonna have fun with it like i've had fun with this one um i say i'm I'm hoping that we touch on everything that we could touch on, everything we could think of, just based off, you know, all the Batman fans out there and everybody who loves this movie. I hope we've done it, just talking about it. But um, like I said, next time we're going to be doing Batman Returns from 1992, oh, yeah. starring again Michael Keaton. And then we got some other actors joining the cast: Danny DeVito, Michelle yep. Pfeiffer, yep. Um, Michael Gall returns as Alfred, and then. Um, I already said Danny DeVito and Christopher Walken. Walken. Christopher Walken, yep. Christopher, Christopher Walken. Walken. Yep. More yeah. cowbells. So this, right. So this is going to be a fun one for sure. But until next time, I am Alfred Gar, one of your hosts of We Grew Up On Podcast. And you are... I'm Alex Warner, your other host. You're the absolute Batman fanatic who loves these movies. I can't wait to review the other ones. Let's get right. it. And I think we're going to close this out saying, if you must go, go with the smile. <laughs> All right. All right. Catch you later. All right. Peace out, everyone.